Hello everyone. There are various different kind of modes on ventilator like volume assist control, pressure assist control, pressure support, etc. These modes differ from the way they initiate, maintain and terminate inspiration in technical terms, how they trigger, what they target and how they cycle. In this series of lectures, we'll discuss these characteristics and examine how these ventilator modes differ from each other. This will also pave a way towards understanding ventilator asynchronies, which we'll be talking about in upcoming lectures. So if your respiratory rate is set at 15, your respiratory cycle is around 4 seconds. And let's say if your I time is 1 second, your E time is 3 seconds. So your respiratory cycle has two phases, inspiratory phase and an expiratory phase. Triggering phase is what tells the ventilator when to start the inspiration. And the cycling phase tells the ventilator what to look for to end that expiration. And the target is the parameter that you set to get the volume. Understand that volume is not the target, it's the end product. The volume is determined by both target and cycle. Expiration is passive on the ventilator. So different vent modes differ because of different triggers, different targets and different cycling pattern. For example, volume assist control, the trigger is either patient effort or time, the target is flow and the cycling occurs when the volume is achieved. So let's understand what trigger is. So trigger tells the ventilator to start the inspiratory phase of the breath. So there are two types of triggers. First is the ventilator trigger that's also called controlled breaths. And second is the patient trigger, which is called assisted breath. So control breath is given in control modes like pressure control, volume control, and spontaneous modes like pressure support are completely patient triggered. So for example, if your respiratory rate is set at 20, your respiratory cycle is three seconds. So the ventilator will initiate breath every three seconds. So therefore, this is time triggered. In patient triggered breath, ventilator will only initiate breath if patient generates or initiates the breath. When someone initiates a flow, they generate negative intraplural pressure, which will generate a positive flow. And these two parameters can be sensed by the ventilator. Therefore, the patient triggered breaths are either flow or pressure triggered. The advantage of ventilator triggered breath is you will get a guaranteed breath and you will maintain the minute ventilation. However, this can be very uncomfortable and can result in a lot of asynchrony. Let's set the respiratory rate at 20. So your patient is going to get inspiratory breaths every three seconds. Let's say patient intrinsic drive is 30 times a minute. So there will be a lot of periods where the ventilator would like to give the inspiration, while the patient would like to breathe out. That's going to result in a lot of patient ventilator asynchrony and will result in muscle trauma. This will result in higher sedation requirement, kill the patient respiratory drive and can lead to further deconditioning of the muscles. Patient triggered breaths are more comfortable as they are more synchronous with the patient's breathing. However, if your respiratory drive is compromised, for example, if you are heavily sedated, paralyzed or have muscle weakness, ventilator will not give you any breath. So in ventilator triggered breaths, the trigger variable is time. So if you set your respiratory rate at 20, you will get at least 20 breaths and this will be spaced out every three seconds. These are mandatory breaths. Patient triggered breath are also called assisted breath. Vent will only initiate the breath if the patient generates or initiates the breath. So the vent need to know when they do that. So they have sensors in them. For example, we have a flow sensor in this picture. The sensor will either sense negative pressure. For example, you set a threshold at negative one centimeter of water. So if the patient generates more than negative one centimeter of water, the trigger will turn on and will tell the ventilator to initiate that breath. Or it can sense flow. For example, if your threshold is set as three liters per minute, if the patient generates more than three liters per minute of flow, the machine will give him breath. Inspiration is a positive airflow and expiration is the negative airflow. So whenever this flow sensor senses that patient has triggered more than three liters per minute of flow, it will give a signal to the ventilator to initiate the breath. In a flow trigger mode, there's always a bias flow in the circuit and the flow sensor is sensing it. If you're inspiring, you're decreasing that bias flow. This is sensed by the flow sensor and this stimulates the ventilator to give you the breath. 
Similarly in pressure trigger, if you generate enough negative pressure below a threshold, you will get your breath. However, if you decrease the sensitivity, that means you make your trigger threshold more negative. In this case, patient has to work harder to initiate a breath. And if it does not reach that level of trigger, the machine will not give him any breath. This is also called ineffective trigger. And this occurs when the threshold is set too high or if there is an auto P present. Flow trigger requires less work by the patient and is more comfortable. It's also very useful in patient with COPD patient who have auto peep. The problem with the flow trigger is that it is very sensitive. Any amount of turbulent flow in the circuit can sometimes start triggering the ventilator. For example, cardiogenic oscillations, water in the circuit or bronchopleural fistula. Pressure triggers are a little more difficult to trigger. So if you have a patient who is auto triggering, this mode will be more beneficial. Avoid this pressure trigger in your COPD patients. As we said, oscillation of flow can also trigger the ventilator. So for example, if you have got water slushing out in this circuit, that's going to create some turbulence and that's going to give an irregular flow in the circuit. And if this is high enough, it can trigger a breath. Goal of the trigger is to match the patient breathing effort to give the breath. So every time patient wants to breathe, machine has to initiate a breath. And second thing is to avoid any lag. The stimulus for breathing comes from nerve impulses from the brain, which results in muscle contraction, which results in negative pressure, then generation of flow. And that's what is sensed by the ventilator. So there's a time lag between the muscle contraction and before the machine will give you the breath. Because of the time lag between the muscle contraction and vent triggering, patient can have some discomfort in breathing. An ideal trigger is which avoids any lag. That means anytime your muscle contracts, the machine gives you breath at the same time. And for this, neural assist triggering was invented. Theoretically, it's most effective. In this case, you place in an NG tube filled with electrode sensor and you measure the electromyogram of the diaphragm. This avoids any lag because you are triggering your breath from the EMG rather than from the flow. Other advantage is there is no ineffective triggering. The vent will always match patient effort, even if patient is not generating enough pressure or flow. Issues with neural assist triggering include difficult placement and dislodgement of the NG tube. And this method has not yet shown to reduce vent free days, length of stay or mortality. One of the other advantages of this mode is that it can work in patient with leaks since you are looking at the muscle activity and not change in flow or pressure. In cases of leak, flow trigger and pressure trigger don't work that effectively. Since patient trigger breath and vent trigger breaths have their own advantages and disadvantages, you can combine both the triggers and form something we call assist control. In assist control, patient trigger breaths are prioritized. So whenever patient wants to breathe, the machine will give him the breath. And if the patient cannot generate his own breath, the patient will get mandatory breaths from the vent trigger. So for example, in this case, patient was triggering his breath initially, and then he did not trigger it for three seconds. So the vent triggered it from him as your respiratory rate was set at 20. If the patient wants to breathe before three seconds, he is allowed to do so. And that would reset the timer. So every time patient triggers the breath, a timer starts and if the patient does not breathe within this time, the ventilator will trigger the breath for this patient. To figure out what kind of triggering is occurring, look at the initiation of the breath on pressure and flow time scalars. These are patient trigger breaths. You will see a small notch in the flow time or pressure time scalar, while ventilator trigger breaths will not have any. Some ventilator gives you color of the trigger so that it's easy for you to detect which breaths are being triggered. Here we have a patient trigger breath. Here is an ineffective trigger. You can see that patient is making effort, but it's not crossing that trigger threshold. And here, since the patient did not breathe for some time, the ventilator triggered the breath itself and there's no notch in the beginning. In summary, trigger tells the vent when to start inspiration. There are two types of trigger, ventilator triggered breaths and patient triggered breaths.
Ventilator triggered breaths are mandatory breaths and are time triggered. Patient triggered breaths are also called assisted breath and they can be either flow triggered, pressure triggered or neural assist triggered. Flow triggered is most comfortable for a patient. Make sure that in COPD patient you use flow triggering. If patient has issues with auto triggering, use pressure trigger. If you have capabilities to do neural assist triggering, you can certainly go ahead and use them as well. To figure out what type of triggering you're dealing with, look at the beginning of inspiration. If you see upward notch in flow time scalar or a downward notch in pressure time scalar, it is likely patient triggered. If you don't see any, it is possibly ventilator triggered. Thank you.